All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the first problem for this uh, SI session, or for this problem solving session. So we've got air enters the compression of an ideal Brayton refrigeration cycle, and I've gone ahead and shown you the refrigeration cycle here. So um, state one, that's 100 kilopascals and 300 Kelvin. Compressor ratio P2 over P1 is 3.75, and the turbine inlet temperature is 350 Kelvin. I want to find the network input, and that's in terms of kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, so that's little w net n. Uh, the refrigeration capacity per unit mass of airflow, so that's in kilojoules per kilogram. Um, so the refrigeration capacity is a rate, so that would be q dot n, but I'm normalizing it to the mass flow rate. So it's going to be q dot n divided by m dot, and that will give me kilojoules per kilogram. Then I need the coefficient of performance for the refrigeration cycle and the coefficient of performance for a corner refrigeration cycle. So that would be one that is operating completely reversibly between those two temperatures. And if you look back at the review video for thermal one on second law limits of cycle performance, you will see that the coefficient of performance for a completely reversible cycle is only a function of TL and TH. And you can get the equation for the maximum coefficient of performance or the coefficient of performance for a re completely reversible refrigeration cycle by putting the coefficient of performance equation just in terms of QL and QH, or Q, uh, yeah, QL and QH, and just replacing those Qs with Ts, um, which we'll see in just a second. So I'm going to make some assumptions, usual suspects, everything's operating at steady state, changes in kinetic and potential energy are negligible and air behaves as an ideal gas. Um, and so for any of these Brayton cycles, the refrigeration cycles, or the power cycles, um, we can go ahead and make the assumption that air behaves as an ideal gas. You can verify that if you'd like to, those temperatures, you can verify whether or not those, uh, uh, whether or not they behave as an ideal gas at those temperatures, but they absolutely do. All right, sorry, I'm in the airport. I apologize for the noise. Um, so, Let's go ahead and define our governing equations. The work net in is the work for the compressor minus the work for the turbine. So H2 minus H1 minus H3 minus H4. Uh, Q dot N divided by M dot. So that's little Q N, and that occurs between 4 and 1, as you can see clearly drawn on the diagram. Coefficient of performance is what you're interested in over what you have to put into it. So what you're interested in is pulling heat out of that refrigerated space, and what you have to put into it is your work net in. Uh, which we've already defined both of those things in part A and part B. And then, as I said, the coefficient of performance for a completely reversible cycle, you can put that in terms of temperatures as long as what you're plugging in there are temperatures in absolute temperature units, either Kelvin or degrees Rankin. If you put it in there in degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit, you'll get the incorrect answer. All right, so you can see that I've got my governing equations only in terms of H's or temperatures, so I just need to go through and solve each one of my states. So state one, I know the temperature is 300 Kelvin, and I know that I've got air, which behaves as an ideal gas, and it only depends on temperature to fix your state. So you only need one property. So at 300 Kelvin, my H value is 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram. And I'm also going to pull off my relative pressure because I'm going to use that relative pressure in an isentropic, rela isentropic relationship applied between states two and states one because this is an ideal cycle, and I'm not given any indication this process does not occur isentropically. So my enthalpy is 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram. My PR value is 1. Ooh, it's not 1.7, but it's 1.386. Apologies. So 1.386. Please make sure you update that. 1.386. All right. State two. Um, state two. I've got a PR two over PR one equals P two over P one. And if I plug in the numbers, I should get a relative pressure at state 2 of 5.1975. And that is based off the correct PR value. That's that 1.386. Um, so my PR2 value, I just need to go to my ideal air tables and uh, interpolate for the correct H2 value. And that's 438.33. Now I'm ready for state 3. I am already given the temperature. That's 350 Kelvin. So I just need to read off the corresponding enthalpy and the PR value because I'm going to apply an isentropic relationship between states 3 and states 4 because once again this is an ideal cycle and I'm not given any indication that the turbine uh, or that the expansion process within the turbine operates uh, as a non-isentropic process. All right so state 4 I'm applying an isentropic relationship and I do note that P4 and P1 are equal to one another and P3 and P2 are equal to one another so I can calculate PR4 and then go to my ideal air tables and interpolate for the correct value of H4. 
And now it's just a matter of going through and plugging those H values into my governing equations. Um, so A, B, and C, it's just plug and chug. And once again, part D, I just need to make sure that when I plug in the temperatures uh, of uh, TH and TL, that they are in absolute temperature units. Um, and they're given to me that all given to me in those absolute temperature units already. All right, thank you very much.